Already at the end of 1944 it was evident that the Second World War was drawing to a close, and that it was a matter of time before Germany fell to the Allied forces. The horror seemed to be left behind for humanity, or at least that was expected. As the Allies advanced into German territory, they found facilities for the mass extermination of prisoners. Millions of dead and hundreds of thousands of survivors who looked more like skeletons than humans were found in the liberated camps. Among the most sadistic perpetrators of that holocaust was Otto Moll, his name may not be as well known as Goebbels or Mengels, but the atrocities he committed at Auschwitz, Birkenau and Dachau sit him at the same infamous table. In this new installment of military history we are going to learn about his crimes, his trial and his execution. Otto Moll was born on March 4, 1915 in what was then the German Empire. Growing up in a region devastated after World War I, extremist ideas were not alien to his mind. In 1933, when Moll was 17 years old, Adolf Hitler was elected Chancellor of Germany, from then on the Fuhrer's political rise was devastating, penetrating deep into the lives of all Germans as an idol, leader and ideologue. Three years later, Otto Mill joined the SS, one of the most respected and powerful special units in the Reich. Before running Nazi crematoriums, Moll's interests lay in music, which is why he was part of the official SS band, until a car accident changed his life forever. Moll lost an eye, fractured his skull, and suffered severe brain damage. The recovery in the Bernau Hospital was long and painful. Once his recovery was complete, between 1938 and 1941 Moll was assigned to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, located north of Berlin. There were prisoners of Jews, Poles, Soviets, Romanian, and of any ethnic origin that went against the racist beliefs of the Reich. In that camp, Moll was at the head of the gardening section and served as the right hand of Rudolf Hess, who was a high-ranking officer and one of the main ideologues of the transformation of forced labor camps into death camps. Due to his iron hand in dealing with the inmates, in 1941 Rudolf Hess was sent to work in the most important camp of the Third Reich, Auschwitz, which by then was already in the process of expanding with the Birkenau facility, the second wing of the extermination complex. Hess took with him his right-hand man Otto Moll and his family, consisting of his second wife and his two daughters. Many Auschwitz prisoners describe Otto Moll as the worst of all the Nazi officers who worked in the infamous death camp. His sadism was exceptional, and because he had a glass eye from a car accident, he earned the nickname Cyclops. At Auschwitz, Moll began by supervising the Agriculture Command, but in June 1942 he was put in charge of a section of the camp set aside for the punishment and execution of prisoners who had committed some type of infraction. The fault could range from the slightest, such as taking too long on a job, to escape attempts. This section was located in Block 11 of the camp, and staying there was unbearable. Prisoners who were not executed received even worse treatment than the rest, with more arduous work and inhumane living conditions. In many ways Moll was ahead of the cruelty of the Third Reich. Even before the spread of the infamous Final Solution, Moll used to execute prisoners en masse and then send them to the Auschwitz crematorium. With the expansion of Birkenau, larger crematory rooms were installed, which allowed the annihilation of more than 1,000 people per day. Moll also developed a special system of pits where hundreds of people could be cremated simultaneously, the prisoners themselves were in charge of collecting human fat from the pipe system to prevent it from clogging. According to the work of historian Jeremy Dixon, Otto Moll is credited with some of the most brutal crimes of the Holocaust. On one occasion, Moll lined up naked women in front of pyres where the bodies of dead prisoners were burning, then shot them in the abdomen so that they fell into the flames still alive. His punishments on the Sonder Commando prisoners were also harsh, that is, the Jews who collaborated with the operations of the camps, who had a few more rights than the rest. On one occasion he discovered one of them wearing a gold ring, doused him with gasoline and burned him alive. He then hung another prisoner accused of robbery by the hands, and shot his limbs until they fell off his body. On another occasion, a group of Jews was being transported in a truck when, due to a sudden movement, a three-year-old boy fell from the vehicle. 
Otto Mall, who was escorting the trip, grabbed the boy by the legs and smashed his head against one of the walls of the field, killing him immediately. Mall took the boy's lifeless body and threw it at his mother, still in the transport truck. Historians have often linked Maul's almost animalistic brutality to his mental problems, it is possible that the accident left enormous scars on the Nazi officer's brain, although that does not excuse the number of crimes committed. For his activities at Auschwitz, in April 1943 Maul was awarded the War Merit Cross. Only three officers from said camp received that distinction, which gives an idea of the importance of Maul in the extermination of hundreds of thousands of people. One of Maul's best-known atrocities occurred on December 18, 1943, when a group of prisoners were returning from the Brzesha Jashkowitz mines and one of the detainees escaped from the work section that belonged to Auschwitz III. Later, when all the prisoners returned, Maul, who was the camp commandant, ordered them to line up in the courtyard area of the camp. Without trial or investigation, he chose some of them and personally shot them in front of the other columns of prisoners, leaving the bodies of the detainees on the spot until the next day. In January 1945, as the Red Army closed in on Auschwitz, SS officers attempted to evacuate the facility by transporting thousands of prisoners to other secure posts. The inmates marched barefoot, suffering from the cold and hunger in what became known as death marches. Maul led one of these processions and, in February 1945, he arrived at one of the Dachau satellite camps. His stay there lasted until April of the same year, when he had to flee to the central Dachau camp, shooting hundreds of Soviet prisoners in the process. Otto Maul was arrested on April 29, 1945, when the U.S. Army liberated the Dachau camp. In November of that same year he was brought before the courts, in what became known as the Dachau Trials, which were held in the same facilities where the death factory operated. On December 13, 1945, Maul was found guilty of dozens of crimes against humanity, for which he was sentenced to death by hanging. Surprisingly, only his crimes committed at Dachau were taken into account, since those committed at Auschwitz were revealed over time. Finally, on May 28, 1946, one of the worst Nazi criminals in history partially paid for his horrors. To continue learning about important facts in world history, we invite you to subscribe and activate channel notifications. We'll see you in the next episode of Military History.